Uh, Gary, thank you for your skeptical view and uh, for <laughs> answering the question that Stephen um, um, uh, asked uh, in the previous session, which how long, because probably maybe your answer is never. But anyway, now we have uh, Juma, um, then, uh, who uh, I'm sure will provide uh, another very comprehensive uh, overview of uh, these uh, developments. And uh, Juma is the uh, Chief Economist, Greater China, for Deutsche Bank. Thank you, Dr. Sobachi. Um, I've been attending three conferences the last three days uh, on working the same subject, so uh, some of you may have actually been seeing me and listening to me. Uh, if I repeat something, uh, my apologies. Um, I was very impressed by Gary's uh, talk. Um, his talk is so bearish, um, probably one of the most bearish views I, I've heard for many years uh, on China or on Shanghai. Uh, that's why I'm positive. Um, I guess the fact that uh, in China, dynamics are so outspoken pointing out to most of the right problems and they are being heard itself is a positive factor. So in terms of uh, reforms they need to do, I think uh, I'm very much um, agree with you and in terms of ability and probability of reform he implemented, I think I'm a little bit more optimistic uh, than you are um, on China. Now before I get into my stuff, I think it uh, may be useful for me to clarify who I am. Um, I guess each of you represents something. You represent Shanghai, uh, CY represents Taiwan, and James uh, represents probably ASEAN country, and Rock, obviously, uh, from Hong Kong. Now, uh, I was born in Shanghai, I grew up in Shanghai. I live here, I work in Hong Kong, and I think my angel is my brother. <laughs> 500 years ago. Uh, so I try to represent everybody, I try to be objective. Um, now, my comments are, are really are in the following sequence on the uh, uh, Hong Kong offshore market and uh, the role of uh, Shanghai, uh, potentially there is offshore market as well in Shanghai, and a little bit on the uh, <coughs> Taiwan market as well. Now, in terms of Hong Kong, um, <coughs> I've been saying for the past uh, one and a half years that uh, Hong Kong uh, should and will take this role of a wholesale market for R&D offshore activities, and uh, the other markets, including Singapore, London, New York, and probably Taiwan, probably Shanghai. In the offshore markets, they were playing a role of uh, the retailers, uh, meaning that uh, <coughs> Hong Kong is going to be uh, the center of offshore IMB liquidity. Um, I think it, eventually Hong Kong should maintain 40, 50 percent of the RMB deposits uh, in the entire offshore market. And secondly, Hong Kong <coughs> uh, has the pricing capability, meaning that uh, <coughs> the price setting or market making is largely done uh, here for RMB products. And finally, the uh, RMB um, assets management um, center, meaning that the most of asset managers uh, in the offshore market running RMB uh, funds are uh, based in Hong Kong. Um, that's uh, very similar to the role of London in the euro dollar market. Um, the other markets, I call them retail markets, essentially they are selling the products produced in Hong Kong and uh, to their local clients. Um, of course, in certain areas or certain product categories, um, some markets may be you know, playing a slightly different role. For example, on the uh, r and FX market, I think the potential for London is actually very large. It potentially, in a long-term basis, can challenge Hong Kong because of the infrastructure there and very large client base in London. Um, now, in terms of uh, what Hong Kong really needs to do, I think, going forward to promote its own role of uh, the uh, center or the wholesale function uh, in the offshore market, uh, I think the critical problem uh, they need to address is to get enough liquidity here. Uh, we have a steady growth of RMB liquidity until Q3 last year and then stagnated. Um, recently it's been falling, uh, which looks like uh, it's not being well supported by the trade settlement business. Um, and uh, the recent RMB FDI, which has gone up from 0 to 30% total FDI, has not contributed positively to the growth of uh, RMB liquidity in Hong Kong. And uh, we don't have a very clear sort of a, a roadmap in terms of what to do going forward, uh, in terms of boosting uh, liquidity in Hong Kong. Now, my own view, which I've been repeating many, many times in China and here, is that uh, it's really a matter of uh, both China opening capital account and also Hong Kong promoting uh, the R&B external circulation. These are the two critical uh, things that we need to address. For China, uh, essentially, uh, China needs to move beyond um, um, exporting RMB just through the trade channel. Uh, this is very limited, and China needs to open the capital 
accounts uh, in the form of <coughs> allowing individuals and corporates to convert um, FX freely and bringing RMB from China to offshore market and allowing the offshore entities to raise RMB in China and remit uh, RMB proceeds uh, to the offshore market. And on the Hong Kong side, uh, my point is that uh, the current emphasis on RMB recycling or repatriation back to China um, <coughs> is not uh, 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 a method that should, we should rely uh, solely on in developing the offshore market because if you channel all the RMB liquidity back to China, uh, there will be nothing left here. And you have to generate what I call external circulation um, function of the RMB. There are lots of different ways you can allow the RMB to circulate in the offshore market without going back to China. For example, ODI is one of the uh, sort of mechanism and the lending uh, to offshore markets is one of the other mechanisms. And uh, uh, more interestingly or more importantly is for third party to raise RMB here in Hong Kong, swap into another currency and using another country. Um, so lots of these functions can generate multiply effect in the Hong Kong market, which means that uh, one RMB after these uh, external uh, circulation mechanisms can become two and three and four RMB. Uh, this actually has happened in the euro dollar market. Maximum multiply used to be six times uh, in the euro dollar market. And that means with 600 billion um, uh, RMB in Hong Kong, uh, the maximum potential you can actually generate two trillion, uh, two point something trillion RMB. And therefore you can rely less on the uh, sort of direct export of RMB uh, from China through the trade channel to the Hong Kong market. Um, now just quickly on the uh, Shanghai market, I think uh, uh, what I want to focus on is the uh, domestic offshore markets uh, in China um, and uh, most uh, sort of uh, likely uh, in Shanghai. This is a debate I was involved in starting from last year. Um, a lot of people in Shanghai are saying that uh, why don't we create an uh, offshore market in Shanghai um, just very similar to Zhongguan uh, Central uh, here in Hong Kong. Almost like, uh, uh, let's create a building in Shanghai, and we call it Hong Kong. Um, all the financial services we provide is very similar to the Hong Kong offshore market, and we can provide these services to non-resident um, clients, meaning you know, offshore registered uh, corporates and offshore uh, individuals. And uh, we make this isolated or separated uh, from the onshore business and therefore, uh, we can create a new market, which is called domestic offshore market. Now, that's very similar to the idea of IBF in the U.S., which they started in the 1980s, 20 years after uh, the, 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 the initial development of the euro dollar market, and very similar to the JOM uh, market, J-O-M market in Japan uh, in the 1980s as well. Um, now, the debate is whether we should do it right now, and how do we do this? Um, the sort of uh, proponents are saying that uh, there's a lot of demand for this service, and uh, the risks are very low, let's do it. And uh, those who are against or who are cautious, uh, including myself, saying that uh, the demand may not be massive. And uh, uh, the risk is that uh, currently the offshore markets and domestic markets have very different interest rates, um, namely the CNH uh, interest rates and the domestic interest rates. If there's 200, 300 basis points difference, and they allow a free flow uh, of funds from the offshore domestic offshore market, which is you know, part of Lu Jatri, to the domestic onshore market, the other part of Lu Jatri, will be very dangerous uh, because it could lead to massive uh, flows of money and distorting or shorting the uh, local markets. Um, of course, if you want to keep segregation between these two markets, um, then you have to put in lots of administrative measures uh, to prevent the flows from happening. And it could be very costly uh, if the demand is not very high. So that's a debate uh, which I think uh, uh, the result of which uh, will be uh, let's um, you know watch and wait and see for a while and uh, uh, see if there's enough demand uh, really justifying this massive effort and uh, also um, I think we can take a more gradual approach of allowing the current NIA account um, uh, business to expand only gradually which is in line with the pace of offshore market development in Hong Kong meaning that uh, currently the NIA account in China allows uh, those depositors only putting their money in the um, demand deposit account and without generating a lot of uh, 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 yields. But uh, we can actually now allow them to access certain products which are equivalent to the yields in Hong Kong. Meaning that if Hong Kong is creating now uh, our <coughs> QP uh, supported bond funds which give you 1.5% yield 
why don't we allow these NIA accounts uh, to access the same products? But uh, <clears throat> this progress has to be a gradual uh, in nature. And finally, just a, a couple of words on Taiwan. Um, I think uh, two bottlenecks may have to be handled or uh, addressed uh, for Taiwan to uh, move towards a more uh, meaningful R&D um, offshore business, not necessarily a center. Uh, one is that uh, the uh, opening of uh, the banking markets, both in China and in Taiwan, uh, to each other's banks. Uh, currently, China limits the foreign ownership, uh, including Taiwanese companies' ownership, to only 20% when they uh, uh, take uh, equity stake in Chinese banks. And the Taiwan limits uh, the Chinese equity stake to only 5%. So without meaningful equity stake, it's very difficult for banks to <coughs> operate across the street and therefore providing services uh, to the other side. And uh, <coughs> the other uh, thing I think the uh, Taiwanese authority need to think is uh, not just allowing the uh, uh, army business to be operated from the uh, <coughs> offshore banking units, uh, but uh, gradually allowing domestic banking units to do the offshore army business. Uh, because eventually RMB will be very, very different from any other foreign currencies in Taiwan. Um, I think on the longer term basis, RMB will be a very, very, very big part of the uh, uh, domestic operation as well. Thank you very much.